if I had a peacock in here, I mean, he'd be in here running the show, but I really don't think this big enough for him. Right, right, if right. If I'm being honest. Most of so, these guys, they put those peacock bass in 120 gallon and call it a grow out. Meanwhile, the fish been in there five years. I am saying, I mean. Restlessness to hell and back. What's my purpose? What do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack. And sometimes you just gotta believe. Yo, what's up? This camera. I built aquariums and sumps. So we're gonna get right on into it. This right here is another plywood build I was getting into. Uh, it's six foot long, three feet, two foot tall. Uh, Gonna go ahead and finish this up, but you know, you, you make time where you can. Uh, so we get started on this. We got the structure of it built up. Gotta grab some more wood, make the walls and stuff. Uh, on top here, you see I got the glass. The itch happens, got a little crack going, so I'm gonna go ahead, score that up, crack that off. That's gonna be my viewing panel. Originally, the plan for this was to be a, a sump for my 400 gallon system. I want something a little bit bigger so I can get more media in there, more flow, and just, just overall water volume. Uh, but I ended up coming across a deal that uh, made me change my mind, so uh, I slowed up on this a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. And uh, I'm gonna just have me another uh, monster aquarium for a reasonable price. I mean, we really can't beat it. And over here, uh, I came across an aquarium. Someone was getting away and wanted to get rid of it, and I said, man, I got an idea for that, so I'm gonna, uh, Go ahead and uh, build me a little paludarium I got up here. You know, I don't want to expose too much, you know, so next time y'all come through, it'll be something to see. Um, and then I got me a nice little uh, low boy 30 gallon here. I've been thinking about uh, doing a, a shell double train. Uh, you know, just put a couple sponge filters in there, give me a nice little bit on some sand, some shells, and then let them do their thing. A lot of surface area, but it's not a whole bunch of water body, I and mean, that'd be a cool uh, different style of aquarium to get done. So that's the plan for that one up there. Then we're gonna go over here. We're gonna check out uh, 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 the 120 African tank here. A um, lot more fish than the last time you came through. Uh, a bunch of just mixed uh, peacocks and stuff in here, and some mbuna, a, a little bit of everything. Um, I switched up the scape some. Uh, you know, you gotta break it up for them every once in a while because you know they all like to, to get at one another, uh, another every once in a while and stuff. Then I um, decided to to drill some holes in the in the Buddhas here to give them more access. Uh, put some of the sides on the back and then at the top. Uh, end up working out real well. They go in there, they hide, they do their thing. Uh, they check everything out and it's good. And then up here, I put a little PVC pipe so when uh, somebody catching a little bit too much work, they can go ahead and hide out and uh, have a little safe place to chill for a bit, take a nap in there or something. Uh, I don't know if you can see there to go big boy, he just, he do his thing, he in there uh, having as many babies as possible, living his best life. Um, I don't know if you can see off in the back sometime, there's some fry back there that's hiding out, doing their thing. They make, they, I don't know how they surviving, but they making it work. So, you know, you do what you can. I like this tank. I think I want to add a little bit more height in here with some rock. Uh, just got to figure out how I want to do it and make sure they still got some space to swim and do their thing. Uh, I switched up the, the filtration on this, and uh, I just went with this uh, DIY sump. I mean, you can't beat it. You know, I just got the pump off of Amazon, the uh, the tower uh, from Walmart, the bed from Walmart, you know. Got some biomedia in there, the lava rocks doing their thing. We got a little bit down there. Need a little bit more water in there, but you know, we make it work. It's actually water change day, so we're gonna get on that later on. But, uh, Make the overflow myself. It's all easy stuff. I mean, this will make the the hobby fun. You know, taking the time, getting it done, building up, making it work, uh, and fitting your needs. Usually, I do a uh, I do a, a style like this where I have the uh, the tops drilled in with holes, so I get a little bit of overflow. But on this one, I just cut it off the top and make the overflow just go straight in, so I can uh, do a lot more uh, surface skimming in there. So, uh, yeah, that's how I got that going on that one. Uh, and to keep my water level maintained a lot easier, and then it won't get stopped up and stuff like that. So, uh, that's the rolling school. I ain't had no problems out of that. Everything good. You know, I got my little feeding station over here. You know, we might get in that later on. I ain't fed nobody today, so, you know, get a little bit, you know. 
Got some food over there, a little variety. You know, get them right. And over here is my my 75, my 55 wrap. Up top, I got this uh this Texas cichlid in here. Uh, he bit of a uh, Billy Badass, so he in there by himself, uh, just hanging out. I got him this little hiding spot. He come out, he swim, he do his thing, he eat, he chill. Uh, you put anything else in there with him, it's a wrap. You just call it quits on whatever it is you put it in there with. Uh, down here, way thinner than the last time y'all came through. Um, the guppy tank, you know, I end up uh, putting a lot of stuff out, um, giving people guppy here and there, uh, drop them off on my mother-in-law house, feed a couple, um, and, uh, and the herd got thinned out, which I think is good, though, you want a little diversity, uh, so you don't get too many uh, deformities when you come with your fish, so, uh, we starting up the colony over again, uh, those two hunt her down on the regular, but she just popped out something here, you can see a couple little, uh, Babies running around, and then oh, an appearance from the mono shrimp. I don't know if you can catch them right there on top of the rock. Uh, it's a couple of them in here, and they just be hiding out doing their thing, crazy. Got the pothos going, some duckweed on top, horn work. I cleared a little bit of stuff out and just let that uh do its thing. And uh, the ram's horn, as you can see, they just going crazy in there. They doing their thing, so I let that tank just really just do what it do. I don't have no problems out of it, out of it just feeding everybody cool. Then over here. Uh, I guess it's more of a show tank. This is uh, my 120 Planet Aquarium. Uh, I got a whole gang of Australian rainbows in there, and they this is what they do right there. They just they swim, they do their thing. I toss a little something in there because I know they go crazy. Let's see. Yeah, they just they go crazy. So I got um, I got 12 of them running around in there. Uh, a couple of auto sinkless in there, uh, a couple quarry cats, um, and then down in the back I got a, a phantom blue pleco in there, and then uh, I got a, a, a small super red uh, bristle nose pleco hide in there. Um, some Amazon swords, some Anubias, uh, Wharf Aquarium lilies, uh, chain sword, you know, not too much. Need to add some more in there, but. Uh, that's what I'm doing on this. This is a this is the only aquarium that's not running either a DIY sump or a sponge filters. This is a Eheim. You can't beat this big boy down there in the back. It's it's rocking. It's doing its thing. Yeah, that's the big dog. Hey man, that thing I filled it up with the uh, with some BioMedia, a couple sponges on the top, and that thing just rolled. It's a beast. I don't have no problems out it. And the flow just stay up the whole time. That that pump is pushing. So they ain't here and they doing their thing. And over here is the big dog right here. I done had some upgrades to this since the last time y'all came through. Uh, way more rock work in here. Um, and then uh, I redid my whole sump on it. Uh, that was a whole thing I did there that uh, ended up turning out real well for me. So um, as you can see, I got the, the Midas in here. I got a Vieja uh, Red Devil mix in there. A couple uh, uh, pick this catfish. About five Jack Dempsey's, a couple of Fire Miles. Um, it's a Red Devil hiding in there. It's a beautiful green terror when you want to come out. He's usually up front. Um, I might have to, uh, you know, pull out some food, get him to come out. Um, it's three uh, VA House and Spill them in here that I got that they've been really putting on some size and some convicts and stuff in here. I got a good mix of uh, Central and South American cichlids in here that I really enjoy uh, on a 400 gallon. And it's just been, everybody been cool. It's been, it's been no beef for real, you know. They they do their thing every now and again, a little bit of aggression, but I ain't never had to pull nobody out, nobody getting too much uh, beat up. There's plenty of hiding spots um, and plenty of places to go. I, I actually just recently added those two big pavers you can see in there for like five bucks from Home Depot. I just wanted to switch it up and see how I like this. So I'm trying that out. Um, and so far, so good. As soon as I dropped them in there, they, shoo, them cats got tucked right underneath there. So we're gonna take a, a a quick look at this uh, filtration I did down here. I'm gonna get some light under here for us real quick. So when I'm doing maintenance down here, I just switch it up and go ahead and help me uh, get some light so I can see what's going on.
All right, so down here, I'm telling you, you gotta stay on the Facebook Marketplace. This is a 135 gallon classic oceanic uh, aquarium here, 75 bucks. Got the dual overflows in the back, so if I wanna switch it up and make it a nice aquarium, clean it up and do all that, it's ready to go. Uh, so now, what you can see what I did is I got my overflows, dropping down into my uh, two little red baskets where I keep either some filter floss and then they already got a, a, a little screen so I can keep that big uh, particulates out of the water column and stuff like that. Got bio balls in there. They do their thing. Uh, then underneath I got a huge bag of lava rock. That's probably like, I want to say like eight to ten pounds of lava rock I got there in the mesh bag. And it's just seated and it's been sitting there for the longest. I got a couple um, pot scrubbies and stuff like that. A couple other uh, sponges that I got. So if I need to start a system, I got those. And I got this power head just pumping in uh, oxygenated water and just keeping the flow going. Then over here, I got a whole bed, uh, uh, more biological media. Uh, this is just Matt random uh, biomedia I got off of Amazon. I saw it was a decent deal, so I just been picking them up and, and tossing them in there. and. Um, Letting it seed and chill. Uh, in the back, that's where I got the heater. Uh, and it's been doing good. I ain't had no real problems out of it. I keep it at 75, and then that keeps the aquarium about 72, 73 degrees um, when it's all said and done. And uh, it's been doing its thing. I ain't had no problems. Then I got the sponge here. I got two layers of sponge. I didn't cut it because I like my versatility. I ain't a cat who like to do nothing too permanent if I can help it. So I got uh, the big uh, blue sponge here to help uh, stop a lot of the uh, particulates coming through and filter out that, that tail end at the end there. A smaller sponge and then I got some carbon wrapped around uh, the intakes there and it's been doing good on uh, bringing back up a nice um, fresh water for my, uh, my fishies up top, man. I mean, I got no complaints about this sump. It was easy to do um, and it, Everything in here cheap. I think this might have cost me like five bucks from um, Walmart and it's the same one I was using in the tote sump that I had before. I just switched up stuff and just increased my water volume to be able to uh, make for a better um, filtration. And everything in here is just cool and it's doing its thing. I got some glass tops on the top to stop evaporation and a couple of um, carbonate. Yep, those you can't go wrong with that. And uh, it's been good. I mean, I got two pumps in there, and I keep an aerator in there to make sure the water's still flowing. And then uh, up on the back is all the uh, electrical back there. So I got my wave maker in the back there. I got my uh, my lights and my pumps all hooked into the um, the outlet, um, the power strip and everything, and all that's good. Um, I got that that uh that power head. I got from a guy from Facebook Marketplace, 50 bucks, and it's in here flowing the 400, getting it done. So, everything in here is cool, and it's all cheap, man. That's what I'm about. It's all it's all about saving that bread in this uh, uh, here aquarium hobby, because it can definitely get expensive, but that ain't got to stop you from doing what you want to do, like this glass. Usually a piece of glass, six foot long, two foot tall, it's going to cost you a little bit. I got it from a broke down 120 for 50 bucks. I came out with three pieces of glass. So, you know, you just can't beat stuff like that. Um, and just stay on the lookout and make the most of those um, garden centers and get your rocks from there and all that type of stuff. Wood, I think, is probably one of the, the hardest things to get to get a nice big piece of wood like that. I, luckily, we got good spots down here in Houston uh, that you can go ahead and get you some nice large pieces of driftwood because, man. That stuff do not be cheap, but it make it work for, for the aesthetic. So, uh, the 400, pretty soon, uh, when I decide I'm gonna uh, make a move and give me a, another upgrade, because once you get a tank this big, you like, ah. I need something bigger. Man, I'll tell you, because you know, <laughs> I know it's plenty of cats who be like, man, this 400, this, this big enough for whatever you want. But for me, I already know, man, like, I want to give me an arrow, and I just know that I want it bigger than this, you know? I want to have plenty of space in there for them. And then if I want to give me some uh, some peacock bass, man, I'll be seeing these cats with the peacock bass. 75 gallons. I'll be like, bro, man, that thing is going to eat you. <laughs> 120 gallons. Yeah, so, I mean, I, if I had a peacock in here, I mean, he'd be in here running the show, but I really don't think it's big enough for him. Right, right, if right. If I'm being honest. Most of so, these guys, they put those... 
peacock bass in a 120 gallon and call it a grow out. Meanwhile, the fish been in there five years. I am saying, I mean, I'd rather have my tanks already built and then go ahead and get the fish. So that's the only reason I ain't, you know, I could have secured these lids and did some more stuff to make it so I can go give me my arrow, go give me my peacocks and, you know, have that all popping. But I just know that the fish grow fast, man. Fish grow fast. Yeah, no uh, doubt, no So doubt. they doing their thing in there. I'm gonna see if I can, uh, so you see if I can't pull some of these cats out real quick. Actually, let me switch this light. All right, quick. let me get over here. Switch it up. Switch it up, guys. See him. That boy, he was a. Uh, he wasn't looking the greatest for a long time, and then he just he had to glow up. I put some big pellets in here. That might change his mind. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I want a piece of this. Yeah, I was worried about the size difference in the fish for a while, but usually once everybody grow up together, it work out all right, but you can't guarantee that. So you always got to have backups if something happen. Right, right, right. You know, rehome the fish, switch the fish up, and there they go beefing. All right, so that's the you know that's the update on me here in this little fish room. Uh, you know, uh, check out my boy IFG. You know he always putting on for the people, always representing this stuff. You know, uh, but all this stuff is all dual. That's why I'm trying to tell everybody: stay on the Facebook Marketplace, catch you them deals. Go ahead and uh, just put it in the work. It's easy. It ain't even no thing. No so, doubt. You know, do that there. Peace.